Hi everyone in 1301, this is Dr. E and I'm here with your week one instructional video. So at this point, you should have taken some time to work through the video that covers D2L and where to go and what to do there, as well as the video that goes over the syllabus and all the different things to expect uh, in the course and how to use that as a, as a tool or resource for you. So what I'm going to do now is just walk through what the expectations are for this week. I want you to know that when you see the schedule for this week and in subsequent weeks, if you're looking at the syllabus, it's normal to be overwhelmed. It's a lot of work, right? And it looks like a lot of work. I, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. A summer session moves very quickly, right? And the expectations are kind of more intensive, right? Um, we're doing the work of 15 to 16 weeks in just over five weeks. So that means that each week is just chocked full, right? More so than it would be during a regular semester. So if you're looking at all the work ahead and you feel like it's just going to be too much on top of your work life, your home life, you know, all the other responsibilities that you may have, um, then make a decision early, right, in terms of what needs to go and what can stay. If you're taking other classes or this class, whatever the case may be, there's no judgment there, right? So what I'm going to do is walk through where to go and what to do. All right, so this is our course in D2L, and as usual, we're going to start every week off in the content area. Okay, remember that there's book information here. So on the left hand side is a list of all the what they're called modules, but they're just different areas in the content uh, space of D2L. So remember that you need to get a hold of your book because we're going to hit the ground running. But I want you to know that, you know, there are links here to go to the uh, campus bookstore as well as purchasing directly from the publisher. I want you to be aware that there is a North Harris specific version of our course text that has specific readings for North Harris students. It's not a bad idea to buy this version because you may also use it in English 1302 if that's a required course for you. Um, if it's not a required course, then no harm, no foul, right? Get whichever version of the text you want. Our bookstore is largely going to have the print version of the North Harris specific text, right? So if you buy the print version through uh, the website for our bookstore, that's what you'll get. And it can take some time to arrive. So be aware of that. Things are moving very quickly. You need to get your book. Um, the benefit of purchasing directly from the publisher's website is that they have an electronic version of the course text. So you have instant access to all the readings and everything that you'll need for this course. Uh, and some of you, you know, have a preference, whether it's having the book in front of you, the print version, or to digitally view the book, right? Um, so whatever your preference is, you just need to get your hands on the book. All right, there's book information, the syllabus, and other materials. This is where you'll find the rubrics, the guidelines, all of that, um, as well as any additional readings that are outside of our course text, right? And then, that's the place. And then there's MLA help. So as we start working through this idea of how to cite sources properly, that's there. And then all the areas where we can find some D2L assistance and life help. Okay, and then we'll start all the weeks. So if we go to week one, you'll note that I've just copied and pasted this chart from our syllabus, the area of our syllabus that holds the schedule. So on Monday, it just kind of gives you an update of what the expectations are for this week, right? So we need to read what is academic writing by Irvin, and that is posted in the content area, right? So if you go to syllabus and other materials, it will be housed there but it's also going to be in this week. So if you scroll down, it's right here. That's an electronic, ver a PDF version of the text, okay? And then it shows on Thursday, you have two things that are due, the discussion post, right? And the email assignment. Um, so the discussion post, if you scroll down here, is linked right here and it has all the instructions, but you can also go to collaboration and select the discussion area directly. This is also where we have a Q&A discussion board. So if you ever have questions, you can ask them directly or anonymously. Um, I really encourage you to use this space, perhaps rather than emailing me, because again, if you have that question, chances are other students are gonna have that question as well. 
but the week one discussion is right here so I can click on that and then you just read through the instructions it's pretty straightforward this week um, so it's kind of introductions right and giving us a chance to write because it is a writing class right um, so I want you to note if you're not familiar with D2L that in order to start your own thread right this is to start your own kind of response you need to click start a new thread and then this will appear down here. And for this subject, you should enter your name. Uh, this just helps not only people who are reading your post, but also me for grading. So put your name right here, and then you can answer all of these questions that are just about you, and only answer uh, to the, the extent that you want to share. Don't share, you know, everybody's gonna see this, right? So only share what you're comfortable with in terms of answering these questions. Um, students in the past have asked, you know, do I need to have a list one through seven or can I just answer them? It, the choice is yours this week, right? I'll get a little bit more specific with formatting in future weeks, but for now, just do, you know, what's what's comfortable for you. There's also instructions about how to upload a picture because that is going to be a requirement for uh, this grade. So just read through this information. You can of course let me know if you have any questions, but I want you to also note that I have posted here so I've given you kind of an idea of, you know, how to do this and what to do. All right. You don't have to format it exactly as I have, but this is just kind of read it as an example if for nothing else. And you certainly don't have to respond to me. That's that's okay. All right, so that is the discussion. So I'm going to go back to the content area. So you also have an email assignment that's going to be due on Thursday. So in another video about D2L, I showed you where to go and what to do to compose your email. Um, and for the purposes of this assignment, I want you to put a uh, test email in the subject line along, along with your class information, which should automatically be put there if you're sending an email within our course area. So just add test email to the very front of the subject line. Then just offer a greeting, hey Dr. E, or what's up Dr. E, good afternoon Dr. E, however you want to do it. I'm pretty informal when it comes to greetings. Some professors are not going to like it, what's up, or hey, but I don't care. As long as you offer a greeting, let's, let's work to be polite, right, and be a bit professional with our emails. Um, in the body, right, you can just say, hey, I'm sending you a test email, and that's it. You don't have to write anything more. Then you can say something like sincerely or take care. I use take care because I honestly want you to take care. And then your name. And when you put your name at the end to close the email, choose the name that you want me to use for you. Okay, so I've asked you for your nickname in the weekly discussion post, but I also want that re I want you to use the name that you're comfortable with and that you prefer. Okay. So that's going to be due on Thursday as well. And then on Sunday, you have a reading response that is due. So the reading response is going to be similar in kind of scope as the discussion post. Generally, they're, you know, around the same kind of length. But if you go to, oops, let me pause for one second and make sure that's here. Sorry about that. I just want to make sure you're kind of seeing what I'm seeing here. Um, before I get into the reading response, I just want to make note of these check marks over here. Um, in the past, some students have thought, well, if there's a check mark, it means that I did that. It, it only means that you viewed that information. So you'll see check marks, you know, start to appear once you have just taken a look at that information. So don't make any assumptions about the fact that those things are done because that's not, that's not how it works. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna scroll down. Scroll down, you'll see week one reading response, okay? And this is separate because it's not in the discussion post, it's in the assignment area. Um, so you can either click here and it will take you to that assignment area and it has some instructions, okay? And this is where you would upload your document. So this is instead of just typing that up in the text box as we would in the discussion post, it's going to require that you actually upload a document, right? And this is why I emphasize again and again to download the school's free version of the Office 365 suite because you get the full uh, version of Microsoft Word and PowerPoint and Excel, um, which just they have more features than the online versions that you may get through Google Docs or OneDrive or whatever else you might be using. Um, and it also makes it easier to then and upload uh, your assignment to D2L, okay? So when you go to upload, right, 
you just, this is my desktop, right? So um, I'm gonna go to my Dropbox and I'm just gonna pick the first thing, open. You'll see that it's loading the document right here and then you'll see it as a hyperlink, right? So if I click on that, then I can actually see the document It'll take some time to load, but you can see the document. This is really helpful because a lot of times students upload the incorrect document. They'll upload a blank template or something that is not actually the assignment. So it's not a bad idea to double check that you've done the right thing. Once you see this right here, you don't have to leave me any comments, that's okay. Um, then you'll submit, okay? When you submit in D2L, it will, uh, the D2L program will actually send you a confirmation email so that you get you know that you've submitted the work i mean you have to make sure it's the correct document but it will send you that confirmation so double check that uh, the other way to get to the assignment area is to go to course activities and go to assignments you'll see it right here and you'll see it's not submitted if you click it will then open. It looks a little different, but it's the exact same thing, right? Um, I do have the a link to the reading, and in the syllabus and other materials uh, module that in the content area on the left hand side, there's also um, a handout about what to do for the reading responses. Um, this one's a little bit different this week because we're just kind of getting our feet wet, um, and there will be a video next week, but it's a good idea to view that reading response handout before you submit this work, okay? So again, you click Add File, go to My Computer, and then you have to find and attach that, and it will appear in the same way it did the, the previous time, and then you click Submit, okay? So I'm going to go back to the content area. And in week one, uh, so we have, we've talked about the discussion post, the email assignment, the reading response. Please make sure that's submitted in .doc, .docx, or PDF format. Uh, the program won't open anything other than those. So if you are working with a Mac, which is something that I work with, um, do not upload your work in pages. And if you need instructions on how to save your document in the proper format, go to D2L Help because there's information there. So there's also a quiz that you'll take. And I recommend waiting on taking the quiz until you've done the reading right by Irvin and until you've viewed all the videos and have have had a chance to look over the assignment guidelines and uh, the syllabus etc because there are questions from all of that okay and then it'll just say start quiz okay it's not timed uh, it gives you plenty of time uh, so but just set aside a good amount of time in case you need to kind of double check your materials before you hit the submit button all right, I do want to kind of mention one thing when it comes to uh, the assignment, right? When it comes to the reading response, and this is really true for any of our writing, even the discussion posts, I really recommend that you compose all of your work in Microsoft Word so that you can use the spell and grammar check features. We're in a writing class, right? So the expectations are that your writing is going to be revised and edited. It's not just you know, random writing on the page, okay? Um, so make sure that you take advantage of those things that can help. You can also use something like Grammarly. Why not use uh, any tools that are available to us? And if you are in the text box, if you're doing your weekly discussion post, uh, you can make sure that the spell check feature is also set for D2L. So those are just things that, why not? Why not use these things that can help you, okay? One last thing when it comes to this week, if you scroll down in week one, I've put a checklist here. And so this is where you can go to make sure that you've done everything for this week. I'm not going to do this every single week, but you know, the first week is a lot. So it just gives you a chance to double check everything. There's no grade associated with this checklist. It's just something that I think might be a little bit helpful since, you know, it can be kind of overwhelming. The last thing I want to mention is that I've set it up so that D2L will automatically send emails if a student has not logged into our class within five days. That means that assignments have been missed and there's a chance that you'll be dropped from the course. I drop students not, you know, because they haven't done their work, but because I assume something's going on in your life that is making it difficult for you to complete your work. So that email is meant to get in touch with you so you can get in touch with me. All right. Good luck this week.